Okay, so let's take a look at part one of this new geometry based unit, basically just named symmetry. Um, in a lot of ways, I could have combined this unit with others. Uh, I was going by a guideline laid out by the province of Manitoba in terms of the order of these units. Uh, I think if, if I reteach this course next year, I might just combine this with the previous unit and make it a bit of a larger geometry unit. But the good news for you guys is this is going to be a, just a little unit with a little unit test that, again, can help jack up your mark if you nail this unit the way you guys did the last unit. Okay, so here's what the curriculum says, and it's just this one point, so we're going to look at this both in part one and part two. Demonstrate an understanding of line, okay, and rotation symmetry. Okay, so we'll go through what that essentially means. This idea of symmetry, basically symmetry means the same, okay? So it's symmetrical, means the same. Okay, but a couple terms you have to be clear with here. So designs that you find in logos, in paintings, in shapes, in drawings, in creations, in architecture, show things called transformations. In math, a transformation is an operation that either moves or changes an object to produce a new object or a new figure. Simple enough. The previous object, okay, is called the pre-image, and then the new thing you create is often just called the image. Simplest way you could look at that is if you look at yourself in a mirror, okay, you're looking at an image of yourself, and I guess you could call yourself the pre-image, right? You're the pre-image of that image. So it's the same object, okay? Now, these two objects are essentially congruent to one another. It means they're essentially the same object. But then the, if that's true, then the transformation is called a rigid transformation or an isometry, okay? Common transformations include translations, rotations, and reflections. You don't need to know necessarily all of those, but let's just go through a little bit. Translation is just a slide. It's a motion of an object described by a direction and an amount, okay? For example, a helicopter can slide different directions, up, down, back, forth, or a combination of those directions, okay? If a helicopter goes down 30 meters, then west 30 meters, we could say in geometry that the helicopter is translated down 30, west 30. So, Translation is a very simple term. It just means to move it or to slide it, okay? A rotation is where a figure is turned around a point. So in order to do a rotation, you have to have what's called a point of rotation, right? So that clock up there has three uh, clock hands on it. All three of those clock hands have a point of rotation that they rotate around. It's the center of the clock, right? A reflection, also known as a flip, is basically a figure reflected along a line. One could almost call it a mirror line, or as we're gonna call in a minute, the line of symmetry, okay? Very simple. The simplest way, again, to describe a flip or a reflection is if you looked at a mountain with a lake in front of it, and you see the reflection of the mountain in the lake, okay? The point where the lake hits the ground is that line of reflection where the things are reflected from. So it's pretty simple conceptually. Okay, but we have to translate this into kind of geometrical number-based geometry. So a translation, the slide, is um, not a rotation, not a reflection. Basically, you're just moving an object without flipping it or without rotating it, okay? But we need some sort of way to map this, a, a notation for doing this. Now, in previous grades, you might have used notation like four up, three down. Anyone ever do, done this in a math assignment before? Okay, we're not doing that anymore. What we're now going to do is move to the more formal notation of the ordered pair, which we talked about in the last unit. The Cartesian geometry system uses this x, y notation point. So here, I'm going to draw a triangle based on three, these three points, point A, B, and C. And I've given, shh, I've given the x, y coordinates for all three. Now, based on the last unit, you guys should be able to easily map that, right? So you can take those three coordinates, map them onto the grid. Okay, there they are. So I've now mapped those three points onto a grid, connected them to create a shape. The shape is a triangle, okay? 
Now, if I'm going to translate this shape, it means I'm going to, for example, move it two to the right and six down. So you can imagine, you're going to take this triangle, move it two to the right and six down. But we need it to be exactly where it should be if it's going to do that, okay? In other words, all three of these points, or what you could call their vertices, right? The three vertices will all have a new value to them. It won't be, B will not, no longer be at negative one, four. And C will never, will not be at zero, one anymore. Let's just take one of these, C. It's at spot zero, one right now. If I move it two to the right, what will its new coordinates be? What will it be? Zero, two? Anyone disagree? What do you think, Tynan? Two, one. Two, one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'd be two, one, right? So watch. Two to the right goes one, two. Where's that spot? That's at two, one. Now, if I move it six down, what will it be now? Six down from where it was. So it was at two, one. What will it be now? Try again. Tynan? Think about it. It's moving two to the right, one, two. So now it's at two, one. Now it's going to move six down. One, two, three, four, five, six. What is the y coordinate of that spot right there? Negative five, right. So it became two, negative five. Okay? Now, let's take a quick look at what just happened there. It went from spot. 0, 1 to spot 2, negative 5. That's what the change was, right? Went from these two coordinates to these two coordinates. What did I say the change was going to be? I said 2 to the right and 6 down. Can anyone see a relationship between these two numbers and what's happening here? Tyne it. That's exactly right. I added 2 and I subtracted 6 to do that. Would that be the same for all of these? If I add 2 to negative 1, what do I get? If I subtract from this, what do I get? Negative 2. So it works in each case. Okay. So there is a mathematical way we can do the geometrical transformation that I just described. Okay. And that's what I just showed there. We added 2 and subtracted 6 to each of those. Now, a way to note this, when you create a translation or any kind of transformation, you're creating, as you can see here, a new triangle. This is a different triangle than this one. The way we generally note that in math for geometry is to put what's called a prime symbol on the new coordinates. So notice A, point A, becomes point A prime. The prime is just that little, like apostrophe there, okay, that you're putting there. Okay? So generally the way it's done is I added 2 and I subtracted 6. This can be noted in, in this format. To translate any point, I go 2, positive 2, and negative 6. I add 2 and subtract 6 to any point. So it could be a triangle. It could be something way more complex than a triangle. If I have the points, I can translate all of it. Okay? Because the image is a translation, the actual image itself doesn't change shape. It's the same shape. It's just been slided over to a new spot. Okay? Now, this changes slightly when we talk about symmetry. Okay? Symmetry or a line of symmetry is a line that will divide a shape into two identical parts. Here's a simple one. This shape uses a line to divide one half into another and both halves are identical except they are mirror images of one another. A triangle, as you can see, can be divided the same way, but it can also be divided other ways, and it still maintains that mirror image. Notice with a square, 
I actually have four lines that can be used to divide the square symmetrically. Pentag pentagons have five lines. Hexagons have six lines of symmetry. Simon. Well, basically, it has to be exactly the same on both sides, except a mirror image of itself. That's what's called a line of symmetry. Remember, the word symmetry means the same. So this side is the same as that side. Okay. Now, ways you have to know how to describe those lines. Horizontal lines of symmetry. Which of these shapes has horizontal lines of symmetry on the bottom four? Shape one, two, three, or four. How many have horizontal lines of symmetry. Two and four, that's right. Notice the square has a line of symmetry that's horizontal, and the hexagon has a symmetrical line of symmetry. A vertical line of symmetry is the like this one, up and down. How many of those have that? All four, right. Then the other line of symmetry is called the oblique line. This is one that's not horizontal or vertical. So in other words, a slanted line and you can see that occurs also in all four. Except for line symmetry, the first one. No, no, it has a slanted line right there. This one, correct, yes. This one ha does not have that. Okay. Symmetry is seen in places other than geometrical shapes, right? Logos, nature, artistic drawings. Human beings like symmetry, okay? If you think about your face, your face could be divided almost symmetrically. Not perfectly, but... And then the other thing that we generally see as symmetrical are letters. Letters are very symmetrical, okay? For example, even a word like the word mom. How many lines of symmetry are in mom? Is it one? Okay. Okay. And it depends on the letters you pick, or the style of letters. But what, what could I, how could I mirror divide this? Okay, describe the one line. No, no, describe it in a word. No, no, that's not the word I'm looking for. Vertical, right. It's a vertical line of symmetry. Now, what if I write the word mom this way? Is it still a vertical line? Can it be a vertical line? Okay. Think of it like a piece of paper. If I fold it over, would they be the same? Now, if this is horizontal, could it fold? What word could? What would I do, could I do to alter that? Wow? No. Close. Yeah, or how about that? What is that one? That's not really a word. Wom. But notice how with this one, I can now reflect it on that line. OK, you guys are getting this. This is pretty simple stuff. OK? All right. So this idea of this reflection is also known as a flip. right? You're just flipping it over. It's a basic flip of the image. OK? There is a way to do this geometrically, which I'm about to show you. OK? Now, when you do a reflection or a flip, the shape is essentially the same shape. It's just now mirror imaged of itself. So all the distances are the same. So it's the same height, it's the same width, it's just everything's backwards now, okay? Other than that, the dimensions of the shape, it doesn't make the shape any different, just a reverse image of itself. Okay, so let's try it with a simple shape. I'm gonna draw this basic triangle with these points. I'm gonna reflect, or I'm gonna mirror this image across the x-axis. So I'm going to use that as if that's the mirror line, or the line of symmetry. So I'm going to create a triangle down here that looks the same. Now, I imagine most of you guys can visualize what that looks like. It's going to look like that. Okay? That's probably how you visualized it. If you took the points, though, of that triangle, so D became D prime. Notice what happened to D. It went from 1, 5 to 1, negative 5. Notice what happened to F. F went from 3, 1 to 3, negative 1. Do you see a pattern? When I reflect it across the X, what do I do? 
Yeah, I just switched the sign of the y-axis. So if I went the other way, if I flipped this back this way, negative 1 would just become positive 1. So that's a simple way to look at it. Now, sometimes it's lines other than x and y. Okay? Sometimes it's just some weird line out in the middle of the grid. So let's say I say I'm going to just go through line 0, negative 2. Okay? When I do a reflection on that line, the only real way to do it is to count, right? So watch, I'm going to reflect this triangle. All I would do is count the number of squares from B to the yellow line, and then reflect it the same number of squares away from the yellow line. So for example, A, I have to go 1, 2 to get to the yellow line, which means I've got to go 1, 2 away. This one, I've got to go 1, 2, 3, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And it should basically plot there, okay? So it's easy if it's one of the axes, like x or y, but if it's not, if it's just some weird line out in the middle, really the only way to do it is to count. Yes? Yeah, remember, we're not dealing with the white lines anymore. We're dealing with the yellow line. The yellow line is the line we're reflecting on now, okay? So don't overthink this. It's pretty simple. It's just basic geometry stuff, okay? So let me back up. If I was to say, where is the line that this shape is being reflected on, could you describe it? How would you describe it? Who's got their hand? Raina, you got their hand? No, Tynan, how would you describe that line? Invisible <laughs> Yeah, no, other than that. Like if I, you had to write down an answer on a test. Line. Yeah, I know it's a straight line, yeah. It is a straight horizontal line, one under the x-axis. Okay, so how could you use the x-y to describe that? Does the y matter? The y does not matter in the case. You know, the y matters because the y tells you where the line's drawn. Does the x matter? Yeah. No, because the x is just going forever, right? So the y matters. So it, the way you could describe that line is it's the line that appears at spot, whoops. 1, negative 0. No, no, 0, because 0, zero negative, negative 1, one right. 0, negative 1, OK? All right. Now, here's another little cheat. If you're going to do a, a um, mirror across a 45 degree angle line, there's a little trick to that. Now, the way we generally describe these two 45 degree lines is y equals negative x or y equals x. And the reason why they're described that way is because that's exactly what happens. Notice at this spot in the line, when y is 1, x is 1. When y is 2, x is 2, etc. It doesn't show up perfectly in my little diagram there, but that's the way it is. The simple cheat for that is, basically, if I'm going to mirror this thing over here, notice the way it draws, notice what happens to the points. Negative 2 becomes positive 2. Positive 5 becomes negative 5. I'm basically just flipping the signs on either of those, if it mirrors across the 45 degrees, you just flip the signs on those x, y points. OK, last few examples today. You could get a question like, you will get a question like this today. Plot this shape. So all you got to do is write the letters, D, O, G, S, at those five spots. And it shouldn't be that hard for you. This is the shape you would draw, OK? You plot the points and then connect the dots. Yes? Just give us the answer to one of the questions. I don't think it's that exact one on there. But. Now, now I'm going to add a little complexity to it. So part one, plot the shape. But then translate it negative 5, negative 2. So what does that mean? It means you're going to go 5 back on the x and 2 back on the y. So the shape's going to go 5 backwards on the x and 2 down. So 5 to the left, 2 down might be another way to look at it, OK? And that's how you would draw it. So there's the original triangle, and there's A prime, B prime, C prime, OK? Just translate it. Yes? Um, so if you were to like look at two circles, three corners, it's a triangle. No, like of the, of the grid itself? Yes. Yeah, they're actually called the four quadrants. These are four quadrants. This is the one where both x and y are positive. That's right. This is the one where x is negative and y is positive. This is where x is positive and y is negative. And this is the one where both are negative. Yeah. 
got to start getting used to that grid system. And this kind of plotting will occur in all the math courses next year to different degrees. Okay? All right. Here's an example question. Reflect this thing, this triangle, across the Y line. So if you imagine that's the mirror, where would you draw that triangle? Now, the simple way is you could just do some counting there. Or you could do the math behind the points. But in the end, you're going to get that reflected shape there. First of all, eyeball it. Make sure it actually looks like a mirror image or a line of symmetry there. Okay? If it does, you're good to go. Okay. Now, in this one, I'm going to combine a couple at the same time. So first I say, reflect this thing on the y-axis. So it's going to reflect it over here. Then, reflect it on the diagonal. So what's going to happen is that triangle is going to go from here to here, then from here down to here. So let's see what happens. So first thing is the triangle's drawn here, then it's mirrored down here. By the way, do you notice something else that's interesting about that right there? What's that? No matter how you mirror it, it's always going to be exact. It's always going to be capable of mirroring the other one. Kind of, yeah. But could I have made a? Could I have made a? Could I jump this down here? Is there another way I could do? Yeah, it's just mirroring across the x-axis now, right? That would be another way to look at it. Okay, let's not overthink this too much. Okay, so here's the key concepts today. Line of symmetry is something you need to know. A line that divides a figure into two mirror parts. A figure may have one or more lines of symmetry, and it may have none, right? Those lines can be either horizontal, vertical, or oblique. Transformations include translations, rotations, and reflections. And you may want to use something like a prime symbol when describing a reflected or transformed uh, symbol. Um, and then there's just a couple other little points to note on there. We'll come back to these curriculum points in part two. So there won't be a new set. This whole unit is really small, just a few curriculum points for this. Yeah, basically it. Okay? Nope. There's no more algebra for the rest of the year. All righty. Can someone please turn on?